Well, the recent revelation from the governor of Katuna said Nasir El Rufai about some forces in the presidential villa frustrating the chances of APC at the poll has been eliciting reactions. Just last week Friday, governors of the APC met President Buhari on the challenges confronting the nation from food scarcity to naira scarcity, which the president promised to address in seven days. Well, is this a promise that will bring soccer to Nigerians? Uh, and we're also asking the question right now, who are these powerful forces in the villa? Let's get more perspectives uh, in this report from TVC State House correspondent Femi Akonde. President Muhammad Buhari's attendance at the flag off of the APC presidential campaign rally in Nasarawa further demonstrated his commitment to campaigning for the Tinubu Shetima presidential ticket and his desire to ensure the APC gets the highest number of votes. But recently, the party was hit by issues that threatened to tear it apart. There are allegations of lack of commitment from certain individuals in the hierarchy of the APC. But the APC governors from the north have decided to stick together and confront what they refer to as a cabal working to scuttle the chances of their party at the polls. The Kaduna state governor Nasser El Rufai was the first among the governors to speak up against perceived opposition from some unnamed elements in the presidential villa. They allege that the Naira redesign policy of the central bank was a deliberate act to incite citizens against the government of the day and the All Progressives Congress. Our fear is that this situation might cause unrest in the country. We also feel it will affect the elections or even cause outright cancellation of the polls. Thankfully, the president has said he will look into it. The chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum has also further engaged the president on the matter. We look forward to a favorable outcome. The presidency has not confirmed nor denied the report of a disgruntled cabal working against the chances of the party at the presidential ballots after the lost out during the APC primary election. The APC governors want the old currency to still be used as legal tender until the end of the year. The CBN is sticking to his guns and refusing to shift grounds, but President Muhammad Buhari has the final say and power to insist on a shift in deadline. For now, it is still unclear who the cabals are. Who do you think the cabals are? TVC senior political correspondent Ayodele Uzubaku joins me in the studio now. It's 18 days to the presidential election and campaigns are taking a different twist. Uh, 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 we've had cabal several times during this, ad, uh, this administration. But at what point did they become a part of our politics? Okay, if I mean, it's a very difficult question to answer because the word cabal has always existed, you know, for, you know, in our lexicon, tracing back to even, let's, let me start by the recent one, 1999. It became prominent during the Yaradua administration. But when I was just searching for that word cabal, and I said, okay, let me make my research into that word. Before that time, the word cabal came, but it was just a group of, you know, some ministers Indeed. under King Charles II in the United Kingdom. So that name, Clifford, hmm. Allenton, Buckingham, Ashley, and Laundry. So it, it was from C A B A. -A acronym from the Yes, <laughs> Cabal. They were strong ministers under King Charles. Hmm. So I now said, okay, let me go, let me do this. In 1999, you know, when you talk about people that, you know, they are not necessarily elected people. They are people, president men, after the Federal Executive Council meeting. President's brothers, president's, you know, friends. You know, the president is human. We have friends. So in 1999, we referred to the, the likes of Otoba Fashewe, you know, as part of the, the cabal, you know, late Ufo Dukaiti, SSG. You know, you talk about Andy Uba. Andy Uba was SSA domestic affairs, or very, very strong. Mm -hmm. This Andy Uba from uh, Anambra State. Abdullah Mohammed was the chief of staff. So in 1999, those were seen as, they were seen as the power brokers kitchen cabinet. Now, when you now go to the Yaradwa time, it became a matter of the likes of Andoaka, the Attorney General, Yusuf Tilde, the Edikam, Mustafa Noi Veta, mm -hmm. Abdurrahman Dambazao, that former chief of army staff. During the time, those were the prominent names, but the face of that real cabal was the um, 
Minister of Attorney General, Minister of Justice, mm -hmm. Michael Andoaka, that said Mr. President could actually sign, you know, the, the, the bill and the budgets from any place in the world. Absolutely. The powers will go to mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia with Mr. President. Talking about times of good luck, you see even the likes of Hayo Richard Jeffor, Pastor Edwin Clark, Urunto Douglas, late Urunto Douglas, old and on and on. This administration, Mr. President, has some friends, the likes of late Issa Futua. He's late. What's, what's his name? Issa Futua, Abak, late Abakiari, is also there. Sunday Sabiu, and his uncle, Mamandara. But a lot of people, you know, those guys, you don't see them every day, but they are powerful people. They are not elected. They are not elected individuals. They are not ministers. And they probably would more power than the elected. They uh, have in the ears of Mr. President. Persons. I remember that on your show you had a conversation with the Katuna State Governor, yes. and you were asking him to name these cabal, and he was saying difficult to name. Naming them is not as important as winning them at the polls. Uh, this is this is an intra-party fight for the APC. It's perhaps even more dangerous than. They are even claiming that these are not even necessary members of the APC. Hmm that they are working with Mr. President. They're not, they're not their party members. How much role do you think these individuals would play as to who emerges president after this election? Do you think they carry so much power? The responsibility, look, we've gotten over that time that they could influence whoever emerges as president in the sense that, look, the ruling party, they've had their primaries and they would have done a lot of, to make sure that somebody emerges. And immediately they had their candidates, that's enough. But the responsibility right now, solely, lies on 93 million Nigerians. Not any cabal anywhere. Nothing any cabal can do around the place. The Independent National Electoral Commission has told us several times that it's going to be decided by the ballots. Not any cabal in Asorok. So the conversation has been how invested Mr. President is in the Ashiwaju um, uh, uh, campaign. And we saw him come out, I think, which state was that where he mentioned that he's solidly he came out behind him? He came out in state today, yes, today. And he's been to you know, some mm. other states with Mr. President. It would seem that um, there's not so much division as it's been widely publicized. Or is this just for the camera, the kind of relationship we're seeing? After this administration, I think I'm going to write a book on Mohamed Ubari. <laughs> he's, he's a complex character. You can't read his mind. You can't read his body language. It's a very, very difficult person to you know, predict, to read his mind and everything. But what I've seen lately, you know, to douse any speculation that has not been supporting his party, he has gone ahead in Casino State to say, look, this is, in fact, there's one audio that um, is online, and um, I, I listened to Mr. President calling um, Senator Bola Metinobu Mr. President, sir, referring to him as Mr. President, sir, that I'm committed to your presidency, and I'm committed that our party, the All Progressive Con Congress, will actually win this uh, poll. So that's what we've seen. But he promised to go to 10 rallies with them. He has not been to the 10, but uh, he has attended some. And we hope that, oh, a level playing field. He has said it several times. So that people will not misconstrue the promise for a level playing play field. To mean to influence mean, He's going to take election. advantage mm -hmm. over you know, others. Now, the APC will have to count on the words of Mr. President being a reflection of what he really feels in his heart. Uh, one thing we are sure that the president is concerned about is leaving a legacy of a credible election. We oh, saw it with the passage of the electoral He Act. said it, he said mm -hmm. it in uh, Kassina said today that somebody that will sustain his legacy, his legacy, that whatever he has invested in this government in terms of project and everything, that he's looking forward to somebody that will actually carry on from where he stopped and everything, oh. the electoral act and what is also done in the past seven years is um, a subject of debate for many Nigerians to decide whether it's debatable. they agree that it's, it's done like well a, or not. journalist in the newsroom that you are as good as your last report. Absolutely. We have to go now. Senior mm -hmm. political correspondent Ayodele Zubaku, it's going to be busy days ahead for journalists, and uh, we're counting on you to That's do what that you again. know how to do best. That's our program today. We'll be back tomorrow, God willing, same time, 6 p.m. Remember, you can watch a repeat broadcast at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. Remember to use the hashtag... TVC Countdown 2023 to participate live on the program. I am Nifemi Ogunto. See you again tomorrow.